so welcome again and the, in this uh, new lecture in the new video uh, we'll try to enter into more details about the architecture of react applications uh, we already saw uh, the first introduction with the first general quick and general overview about uh, what it's like uh, to work inside the, the react framework and today we're going to uh, start picking uh, each of the items that we quickly overviewed in the last uh, week and try to understand them uh, more and more in detail more deeply and today we'll start uh, with uh, uh, the key uh, foundations uh, uh, that are uh, components elements and the jsx language so we already have a, um, a flavor of what these are uh, from the very quick example that we did last week uh, but today we are going to to study and to see all the details that are needed to really uh, program them be proficient in them and understand what is happening down there so uh, the idea is that uh, uh, all the uh, complexity of react uh, uh, which is quite a, a, um, uh, let's say the core of react is quite a cohesive uh, uh, framework uh, so there are very few concepts uh, quite deep uh, but they are strongly interrelated and we're trying to to split them in in two weeks basically uh, this week uh, part one the, the part that is uh, here depicted in blue uh, we'll study mainly the static construction of websites or uh, web pages so uh, all that uh, is needed uh, to start from a given uh, idea of a web page structuring that in components describing this component with jsx and passing down all the properties that are needed uh, to configure dynamically the behavior of this prob uh, these components and then next week uh, uh, will be about uh, giving a dynamic behavior uh, to this component so intercepting events uh, handling with the handling HTML forms uh, handling uh, DOM events uh, in order to be able to mutate uh, the, the the appearance of the components uh, themselves uh, in the page um, uh, we see that uh, uh, something we already started three in, uh, in this week but uh, most of it will will be, uh, will be moved to the next week uh, to see all the details of the state management complexity the context and the forms and so on which are quite specific to react uh, so we split uh, so the construction of the, of the of the content this week and the evolution dynamic modification of the content next week hmm? so at the end we'll uh, at the end of this two weeks uh, journey will uh, be able to create complex applications that are comparable to the very quick one that we did last week uh, but uh, with more components with a uh, more uh, deep understanding of what is happening and how to organize information we we'll see that one of the most uh, important problems in react will be how to manage where and how to manage the state hmm? Uh, already at the end of, of this of this lecture we already see something about the state but uh, uh, most of it will be uh, the in the um, in the example that will come uh, in the second week okay so we can uh, uh, we can start the journey together and uh, starting uh, uh, just by recalling uh, uh, the the three main uh, ingredients uh, uh, from the conceptual point of view of the react framework basically all the uh, react application lives uh, because of this call hmm? we have somewhere in the main uh, js uh, a uh, call uh, to the render method of the react dom class hmm? by the way we are using react dom because uh, we are applying the react framework to, to browsers so to the dom and uh, uh, but uh, uh, some of you will, uh, may already know or have some uh, information about react native which is used uh, uh, for creating nav native uh, um, mobile applications and in that case uh, we will render the same uh, uh, tree the same react tree into a different uh, framework which will not be the dom will be the native uh, uh, rendering framework so that's uh, the general uh, concept that will be applied to a different rendering infrastructure but let's keep with the with our within our web context uh, the render method has two parameters uh, that we know that one are uh, the first one is the element that we want to render and the second one is easy it's a dom node so we are injecting in a way mounting an application onto a dom node so this target node is a dom node element is one object of type react element it's an element of the react library we call it element and uh, uh, so this method renders uh, the element uh, 
uh, object what does this object come from where does this object come from well how how can we create an element uh, basically there are two ways of creating a react elements element one is uh, calling the method react.createElement, which is quite explicit, uh, and the other is using the JXX uh, syntax. In either way, that we'll see that they are really equivalent, uh, so the second one is just a syntax shortcut for the first one. We are creating uh, uh, elements uh, that can be rendered. Mm -hmm. So the way of creating something that can be rendered is to use uh, create element or uh, to use a JSX expression that uh, both of them will return a value of type element uh, with object type uh, element an instance of the element type hmm? um, okay and uh, what the how can uh, say uh, a JSX expression or create element call uh, construct these elements so what are these elements composed of they are composed uh, of uh, uh, other elements uh, in a in a hierarchical way so actually what we are rendering is not a single element but it's more a tree of elements an element inside other elements and so on and so elements are composed of other elements that are called the children here or children there and components hmm? components specified uh, by any custom type and these components are the real strength of react where we can define our own components or we can use predefined components in the DOM or from some other library. And uh, the focus uh, of React is really uh, to have very uh, easy to reuse components uh, that only focus on the visual aspect of what they are going to render and let the library care about everything else. Hmm? Um, so uh, to summarize, we are rendering an element or more correctly an element tree a tree of elements and this tree of elements is obtained by composing by using components hmm? and where do these components come from components come from component definitions uh, so the, some of them ca can be predefined components uh, like uh, react already has all the dom nodes uh, already uh, defined as uh, uh, predefined and primitive components so uh, you can create an element using a div, uh, using a p, using a table, whatever uh, DOM node you can you want to use, uh, or you can uh, create your own defined component by just extending the React.component uh, uh, class and uh, uh, returning uh, and some uh, tree of elements that will uh, define the component. Hmm? And uh, so in this case, this component uh, is uh, used to create an element and itself uh, it will render a set of, of, uh, of elements, an element tree, basically a tree of elements uh, um, that, that is custom defined here. Hmm? So basically it's a, it's a circular definition where an element uh, is, is created by uh combining components and each component uh, when it's rendered uh, it's rendered by using some elements mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that uh, uh, every component will use elements uh, that may be other component may include other components and those components are, are uh, obtained by uh, rendering other components and so on until we reach uh, just uh, uh, a tree of, of predefined components so every custom component will be converted into the corresponding tree of predefined components through this the interpretation or of this nested structure we we'll see the details uh, of that in, in this lecture okay so this is the, the general framework we have this tree and uh, uh, it's better to make the distinction here between elements and element trees and components okay so elements are what is actually rendered and components are the classes that will do the rendering uh, will decide what to, what will be rendered uh, the component is actually where we have the logic uh, of the behavior of our application the elements are just uh, say blueprints uh, are just templates uh, uh, that describe a given part of the dom hmm? so with this in mind uh, uh, we start uh, uh, first by studying components uh, and later on we'll move to uh, sorry uh, first we're studying elements and later on we'll move to components uh, so an element in react uh, is just a simple object 
that describes uh, a fragment uh, uh, of the dom hmm? uh, maybe a single dom node or a, or a small tree of dom nodes um, and actually it's uh, the in, in the react library uh, react element is uh, corresponding to a, a single dom element uh, but in the, in the virtual dom so a react element doesn't live inside the browser dom the react element lives inside the react virtual dom so it's a it's an object that it looks like uh, or has many properties in common with a dom element uh, but it's much uh, more powerful and much faster to operate because it doesn't doesn't have uh, to interact with the browser rendering uh, method and as we see from from the call uh, for the create element call that we saw here uh, creating a new element only requires uh, three information uh, the first is the component type so an element is created by describing a component type that may be for example a, a, a button or a button so a button with a capital b is a, a, a um, custom component and a button with a lowercase b would be the native uh, button in uh, in the dom in the in html so uh, uh, i i descri i'm describing what is the nature of this dom element that i'm uh, representing with this react element this uh, um, a component uh, will have some properties some properties that are passed to the components and properties in the case of a dom node are simply uh, the attributes of the node itself in the case of a custom component uh, these properties are like uh, uh, the parameters of a function so there are uh, variables that can affect the behavior of the component itself and finally uh, any, every every element can contain other children children that are uh, uh, on their turn that they are other elements that will have the same property the same nature no? that will uh, create and define the uh, the element tree mm, that we are already accustomed uh, to see in the browser uh, an element is not a part of the page so it's not composed of real dom nodes but it's just composed uh, it just describes a set of nodes so in a way it's, it's more like a template like a blueprint yeah, and not as an instance of nodes mm. so it describes how to construct a part of the page and this means that this the same element can be constructed many times in many places and maybe every time it will have very slightly different properties and so will be rendered in a slightly different way so it's a rule of creating a part of the page the, comp the element the rec element is not the part of the page it's a rule for composing a part of the page and uh, they're just that so then you cannot do anything with an element except asking it to render on the page and there are no methods that can we can call on these element objects hmm? they are just simple uh, object description uh, if we go into more details about the uh, create element call we are not going to use uh, very much the react dot create element uh, syntax uh, because we learn uh, jsx which is just a, a shortcut for this so uh, it's easier to learn the uh, the parameters by looking at the functional uh, syntax uh, and uh, everything we learn here will be transferred uh, exactly to the jsx syntax so i say that creating an element requires three ingredient, ingredients three parameters the first one is the element type the element type may be hmm, of two different uh, types well, the first could be just a string and in this case it will correspond uh, to a, a dom node a natural dom node so i if i want to create an element of type div i just put div as a string in the first parameter and this is final it just defines what the terminal aspect in the page will be as a div node as a dom node as a real dom node otherwise i can create an element by using a component in this case, uh, in, uh, the type will be the name of the component. So the name of component uh, without a string is just uh, the identifier. Uh, components are functions or classes. So I will, will put the name of the function or the name of the class uh, that is used to create this element. So in that case, we don't know yet what kind of DOM nodes will be used to represent the element and it's the component that will decide which dom nodes uh, will be used when we want to render this element 
so i know that the rendering this element uh, implies uh, creating a div node or implies creating a set of nodes uh, that the component itself uh, in this case uh, will decide hmm? uh, the second parameter are properties so in the case the first attribute is a dom node uh, these are just dom attributes with some exceptions but basically we can pass uh, all the attributes that are defined in the dom for that specific uh, um, node type so it's, if it's an image uh, i put a source if it's a, a an anchor is a link i put the href and so on hmm? um, so i i pass them as an object in instead of as a, as a set of strings uh, but uh, uh, the, the nature is exactly the same while on the other hand if the type is a custom component so not dom node but a, a user defined component i can pass uh, uh, an arbitrary uh, set of values so any type of objects i can define here to create this element these objects will be passed to the component and the component will uh, have a variable called the props props stand from properties uh, usually it's a property of the object if we are using the class representation or the function parameter we'll see them when we discuss uh, components and uh, in the component body we may use all the values that we passed here this is just value passing these properties are only passed from the element to the component and not the other way around um, so all of these are objects and so if i want to specify uh, the the source of, a, of an image i have to create an object with a property source uh, colon and the name of the and the string with the with the address this there's a couple of exceptions basically because some um, html attributes are also reserved words uh, in javascript in particular class class uh, is used in uh, in html for specifying the, the the css classes of the element but in javascript it's a reserved word because we need to use that for creating classes hmm, and objects so in this case uh, when we want to specify the html class so this says the css class of a, of a dom element we use class name instead of class hmm? so we just need to remember uh, to, to change the name of these attributes so use class name to represent the class attributes in a in a dom node there's also another uh, clash uh, syntax clash where the four attributes uh, uh, which is an attribute of uh, labels in form so I have a label for a given element or a given input element uh, in this case it, it needs to be written as html4 because again for is a reserved word uh, in, uh, in is our keyword in uh, in html in um, javascript okay that's for properties the third one is uh, uh, children uh, three children uh, is uh, the set uh, of other uh, react nodes maybe just one string or one number in this case for example i have a, an element of type p a paragraph with some text inside or an h1 with some text inside so in this case uh, the children of the p or of the h1 element is just a text node a text node in in, in dom so in this case uh, uh, will be just a string uh, containing the text uh, content of the given or element or uh, this may be another react element and of course we are creating trees in some ways because this element will contain other elements and so on or maybe an array of nodes so we can have one object here or an array of objects just imagine the square brackets there uh, when we have a list of of, of of children for a given parent node so imagine you have an element of type list and the children are a list of items so I imagine the element of type ul and a number list in html and the children will be an array of li of list items for example uh, this was just the example on the uh, predefined dom but we may also have an element of type uh, i don't know uh, to do list and uh, the children will be to do items so we may also work with uh, user defined elements not just with predefined nodes and all the children 
uh, the nested elements uh, specified by the children are just rendered inside the body of the element itself mm -hmm. so they be, can be constructed to uh, to be inserted as, uh, inside the tags uh, of the of the main type mm -hmm. so if we see this uh, def uh, we follow this definition um, for example uh, this is an example of a, a very simple node actually it's a, it's an element tree because we have uh, an object of type button with some properties and uh, uh, the properties of this button are the class written as class name and some children and in this case children are other uh, elements in this case the element is of type b and uh, as a child uh, again it has children of, uh, of type text it's a string so it's uh, a, t a simple text so actually we are creating a, a button whose content is a bold b tag whose content is the okay text hmm? so we are this uh, and this is just described with simple objects uh, we are not going to use this uh, very long syntax with objects uh, we'll see that jsx is much more uh, uh, short is much shorter and much easier to write hmm? but this ju just shows us that, uh, that uh, react elements are basically simple js objects we we won't also use this syntax because uh, the the prototype for this is not a uh, react element uh, and so we need to create them with the proper prototype and not with the object prototype uh, as we as we already know um, and so we'll uh, but it's just uh, what we see if we want to inspect a react uh, element uh, in this case we have uh, an, uh, an example of a, uh, an element uh, created by referencing a component so in this case the type is no longer a string is no longer a dom node but it's a identifier button for a component somewhere in your application you will have a class component extending react.component or you will have a function component and to this class or constructor or to this uh, function you will pass this property you will pass this object here and it will be available as a property of the component itself mm -hmm. so uh, the syntax is very similar and you can mm, mix you, you can use uh, uh the same syntax for both cases for uh, regular nodes and for uh, components uh, uh, that will create elements hmm? uh, okay we just just to know this uh, we we see the syntax here to understand what's happening but we are not going to use the syntax uh, uh, actually and what happens is that uh, when we render these nodes uh, in the first case uh, we are really rendering this fragment of html so basically every element here is uh, uh, calling uh, or is involving a DOM node so the translation into HTML is uh, predefined in so it's very easy to, to read the HTML through the definition of the nodes of course uh, the properties here become attributes here of the uh, of the um, of the element itself or the HTML element itself in the case of a component uh, it's not the translation into html is not direct uh, because uh, we know we need uh, we are calling a component and a component uh, is our way to, for encapsulating trees of elements and only the component will know which elements will, will be generated okay so basically what react does when it tries to render this it will ask the component in this case it will ask the button component please render yourself and rendering a button will generate a tree of elements and this tree of elements will replace uh, this definition here so actually we are replacing some uh, element uh, involving a component with a group of elements uh, that uh, that is the result of rendering the component and this group of elements uh, again uh, will be made of some uh, dom nodes and that's uh, fee closes the process and some other elements uh, some other components and in that case these other components will be react will be will repeat the process recursively and will ask those components to render themselves uh, and so replace that part of the subgraph uh, of the object graph uh, with the rendering of uh, those components and so on 
and so the process is a little conceptually repeated until only DOM nodes are present and so there is no more expansion to do and so actually the rendering of this component uh, recursively will uh, look like uh, for for example something like that hmm? where only button and type and uh, b and text uh, are are involved um, as in the last case hmm? so it's a way of uh, describing how to render the html uh, by convention uh, we just have to to um, to be sure that uh, all dom elements uh, are always expressed in lower case we know they are easy to distinguish because they are inside strings uh, but uh, uh, as additionally all the html elements are always written in lower case and react components are always written in uppercase so uh, they always start with an uppercase letter and this will enable the programmer but also the react library to distinguish between the two okay in this case the, it, the distinction is not needed but as you will see in a moment in jsx so it's the only syntax distinction that will help the, the um, react to 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 make them apart hmm? and uh, apart from this uh, you can combine together uh, dom nodes and uh, react elements as you prefer you can nest a component inside uh, a, a, an html element you can nest uh, uh, html element inside components you can nest components uh, uh, as a children of other components uh, which are children of a list of uh, html elements whatever you want the strength of react is actually that they are a very simple model and that will generalize everywhere hmm? so it just components uh, all the way down until we find the predefined components that correspond to dom nodes hmm? and basically this means uh, that the, the basic mechanism for uh, handling complexity in react the complexity of user interface is composition so a node component is composed of other components okay is uh, uh, including other components uh, there is no inheritance there's no extents uh, in the in, a, in the react library you are not extending a component from another component by adding new behavior mm. uh, inheritance may be complex uh, especially in languages like javascript uh, and so uh, jo uh, react uh, chose to go to the composition way instead of the inheritance way so we don't have uh, component trees uh, we don't have lists that are refined to integral lists or something like that okay uh, we, we only have one level of inheritance react component and the actual components and the dom nodes that's it hmm. okay <clears throat> so these element trees are what really compose the virtual dom uh, that we uh, that we already mentioned last time uh, the syntax for creating nodes may be boring uh, that's why react defined an alternative syntax uh, which is called jsx uh, uh, which is a more humane way of describing trees of react elements so when we'll try to, to describe a fragment of a page this fragment may be complex may have many nodes with uh, attributes and so on so we may want to use <coughs> a simpler syntax and uh, so the react uh, developers invented this uh, other language called jsx stands for javascript syntax extension a very <laughs> a very dull name by the way uh, but it sounds good um, and it's just an alternative syntax for react.create element so it's nothing new it's nothing strange it's not a string it's not a strange data type it's just a way that a preprocessor will turn and will uh, uh, convert into a set of react.create elements uh, uh, calls hmm? uh, the detail is that uh, uh, the syntax is based on xml fragments uh, so uh, for example you have um, a, a fragment like this my button some properties some child node closing my button hmm? this uh, is a jsx syntax for uh, describing exactly this call hmm? um, we have these three uh, parameters of create element uh, my button which is the name of the component the name of the component is specified by the tag name my button the attributes uh, of the component the properties are listed 
has XML attributes in a syntax which is very similar to the uh, HTML attributes. Uh, we'll see the meaning of these uh, brackets in a second. And uh, these are corresponding to the props uh, of, the of the create element call, so the second parameter. And then we have children that are corresponding to the third parameter of the create element call that are just included inside the two tags. Uh, just be uh, aware that uh, all the tags should be properly closed so should, you should balance all of them so instead of a html where you can open a p tag and don't close it because you are opening a new one and the html parser will close it automatically for you in jsx this is not allowed and also if you don't have any children you can define a self-closing tag by having only the opening uh, part uh, with a slash at the beginning these two are mandatory, they are not uh, optional. So the syntax for XML is a bit more strict than the syntax for HTML. Um, and so what happens is that everywhere, everywhere you find a tag sequence or a self-closing tag, well, this can be inserted anywhere in your code where uh, a Java, a JavaScript, any JavaScript exception could be valid. So you can use JSX freely everywhere, not just in components. So whenever you want to create some element, uh, React elements, you can use the syntax. And uh, this means that uh, these tags, uh, this syntax is just a shortcut for React component uh, elements. So you can store these elements into arrays, you can store these elements into objects, you can use the map and filter, and whatever operation you do, they are just React elements. Instead of creating them with the, with the functional syntax, react.createElement, you are creating them with an alternative syntax, which is then converted then. Okay? So they're just, uh, they are just objects, they're nothing strange. Hmm? So let's get used to use them uh, like when you are opening uh, braces, you are defining an, a, a normal object, a plain object. When you are using tag syntax, you are defining React object, React element objects. That's it. It's a, another syntax. Um, so you can uh, assign them to a variable, for example, hmm? uh, and use this variable uh, as well when you want. In some cases, uh, especially when the expression is a bit longer, what you see all, very often is uh, in enclosing the JXX into a couple of parentheses. This is not uh, actually required, it's just for, for clarity, okay? But uh, uh, I, maybe I suggested when the expression becomes more complex so that we, we see more clearly when the JSX expression begins and ends. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that uh, in this case, message only has some properties here. It doesn't have any children. And so we, decide, we, we wrote them in, with the self-closing syntax. Okay? In this case, the div is open and closed because it does have some, some child here. A textual ch a child here a message doesn't have any children so i will close it here it's also uh, possible to write slash message right after that hmm. um, as i mentioned uh, the tag name is just uh, the first parameter to create element and this is uh, some implication from uh, the point of view of the imports of your library so if you write here return this tag here that looks like an html fragment or some sort of string you just have to remember that really what you're writing is this one react.createElement foo etc etc and this means that for this statement to be valid the react variable should be defined so we need to import react so it's, it's quite strange because if you read this code the react name is not used anywhere well, it really is used after we expand the, the JSX syntax. And also custom button, this component that is imported here, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be used as an object, but really is used here because this is not just a text, it's not a string, but uh, it's the first parameter of this function that will be interpreted as a, uh, as a component, as an object. So uh, we need to remember to import the React library and all the, uh, all the components name, otherwise the compilation of JSX expression will not be completed because uh, uh, after the initial translation, the, re the resulting JavaScript will have no uh, 
uh, will have undefined React uh, or undefined component name. Hmm? So just remember to put the, the, the imports that you need. Um, by the way, uh, just remember that this expression here is just a shortcut. Uh, and uh, from the syntax point of view, this uh, should be an identifier, cannot be an expression. Okay. Uh, and so if uh, uh, you want to compute uh, um, or let's say pr uh, parameterize the name of a component, uh, you, you cannot do that unless you define an intermediate, uh, another function that will map to that. So, for example, uh, you cannot write uh, uh, return uh, and then expression here that will return custom button or um, uh, urgent button or a normal button or something like that. Uh, you must define a function and then use uh, warning button as uh, as the expression as the JSX expression, and that will be re well will return one or the another. Hmm? So it's a, it's a strange way of saying uh, if, you, if the component that you want to include is not known uh, at, at uh, compilation time, then you need to define a function, which is actually another intermediate component uh, to, uh, to decide which component you want. Uh, it actually, uh, the only constraint for doing that uh, is that you return a real uh, el um, element and uh, the function that defines the new component uh, is uh, a capital uh, does have a capital name uh, because that's how components should be called um, let's go to the um, the braces that we saw in the attribute expressions usually attributes are converted to props of the react elements so when you have attributes listed in the in the tag they are converted to the props object every attribute is converted to a property of the props object and uh, so for example single uh, simple attributes are just converted like uh, a string uh, the name of the uh, the attribute is converted to the name of the property and the value of the attributes is converted to the string value of the property itself in some cases this is it's easy and uh, uh, is done for just uh, uh, string values. Hmm? Uh, when you want to pass uh, something different from a string, so not a string, but any other kind of JavaScript expressions, you can do that by enclosing that in uh, braces. So this is the name of the property, shadow size, which is translated into the property name here. And this is a, is a JavaScript ex expression. In this case, it's a number expression. And so you see that it's converted into a number and not a string containing the number two. But with this uh, braces expression, or with the braces syntax, you can write, you can insert any type of JavaScript expression. A Boolean value, a more complex expression that returns a string or whatever. So any JavaScript expression is accepted inside the braces. Is a, it's a very powerful way of uh, computing the attribute values for any component. And so imagine custom components. For custom components, uh, the attributes uh, are the properties that are used by the component uh, to render itself. And these properties can be computed by any valid JavaScript expression when you are calling the component, when you are including the component into uh, another element. So that gives you a way of passing to the component uh, a dynamic expression that will influence the value of the properties of the component itself. And uh, so uh, as a second step, it will, it will influence the way the component is going to render itself. And the same goes for children. Children may be very simple, like just simple text, uh, string literals. Or children of an element uh, of a component may be other components. Uh, more than one so in this case a sort of an array of components a list of components in, uh, that are defined as children of the main container component or you may also use javascript expressions uh, javascript expression that will return a single value and the single value will be the string value so it will be used as a, as a text or um, an object expression and it will be used as a component uh, 
or a list of uh, or an array of JSX elements. Uh, so in this way, we are inserting a computed list of children of the JSX elements. So this JavaScript expression will return uh, a, a list of JSX expressions of React elements. And this uh, will be the list of children of this given container. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be an expression or maybe a function that will be called back uh, to uh, return the component, of course, uh, or um, anything else, uh, because in some cases you can pass other types of objects uh, that the component will interpret and decide how to render. Mm -hmm. So these are just the, the basic way. Uh, all the children in some way are automatically included uh, as children in the com in the rendering process but the component itself uh, may access to the, the expression that is specified through the a special property children so we know that color becomes props.color shadow size becomes props.shadow size and syntactically every attribute is converted into a prop but also children which syntactically are put in a different place, are inside the element instead of the attribute list, they will be also put available into the props element. Hmm? So we'll see some, some application of that later. Uh, this means that also uh, children can be computed. Hmm? So for example, uh, uh, imagine you have a menu and this menu will be different uh, depending on the fact that the user is logged in or not. So logged in could be a prop of the element. So uh, we have uh, the menu, which is a list that contains uh, many, many links. Uh, and the first of these links will be the user menu or the login link. Mm -hmm. User menu, login link are different components uh, that uh, in the case the user is not logged in, I put the login link so that he must log in. Otherwise, the user is already logged in. I will show the user menu to him. Uh, so imagine in the top right corner, of every website we have something like that it will show you my profile my user menu or it will show me the the signing or, or logging button uh, for entering mm -hmm. uh, so in this case the child of ul you see that the braces here the child is computed mm -hmm. it's a it's a way of, the, of defining very easily a sort of bind, uh, a very inline component something that will change its rendering uh, depending on some properties and uh, so we have uh, a JavaScript instruction here that includes a JSX expression ul slash ul and part of this expression is a JavaScript expression so JSX contains JavaScript with the braces and inside this JavaScript we have JSX again we are creating components again so we have JSX inside javascript here inside jsx inside javascript hmm? it's not a problem get used to that um, there's no problem with that we can mix jsx and javascript in any way we like and we can nest them uh, arbitrarily deep hmm? um, as, uh, we know that jsx is just normal javascript so it's just a pre-processing step Mm -hmm. but it, 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 it's very powerful to be able to mix them uh, and nest them in this way mm -hmm. another detail about child expression is that some values are treated in a special way if uh, the some child of an element returns undefined or null or a boolean true or false both of them then all this element is skipped it's not rendered and this use, uh, is very useful if you want uh, to display some element only in, with some conditions. So have a look at this expression, which is quite uh, a pattern that we see very often. If uh, the user level is a min and render admin menu. So if this condition is true, okay, uh, then the end needs to evaluate the second uh, operand and the second operand will be returned. As the value of the end operation no? so this is how booleans work in javascript if the first one is truthy then return the second one uh, so if the user level is the user inside the menu if he's an administrator 
I will also return the menu for administrators. Okay, if the user level is not an mean, this expression will return false. And false doesn't mean to render the false string text, text string. It just means that don't render anything. So if we want to include uh, some children only with some condition, you can use this syntax. Uh, and you know that uh, whenever you return a Boolean value, that expression is, or, or null, that expression is not rendered. Hmm? So it's a quick way, a quick way of uh, uh, avoiding ifs or avoiding creating intermediate uh, components just by using the shortcut. Hmm? Um, another detail of the JSX syntax is uh, uh, the presence in HTML of some attributes uh, that don't have any value. Hmm? So usually an input uh, and uh, name equal to name. Uh, you have the name and the value of the attributes. But we may also have some sort of Boolean attributes that, uh, that change the behavior of the input depending on whether they are present or not. So for example, an option inside a select has a selected attribute. Uh, these, these attributes selected, disabled, don't need to have any value. Don't, don't, uh, we don't expect to have any value in HTML. Hmm? Uh, since uh, these will be translated into objects, uh, in our JSX, uh, it's better always to specify the value. So we should uh, specify a Boolean value for them. So in HTML, it's not required to specify any value. In JSX, is uh, uh, suggested or highly suggested i would say mandatory to specify a, way, a value of true when you are including that hmm? so just to keep the syntax uh, uh, cleaner um, comments uh, don't don't exist in jsx so you you it looks like html so you could be tempted uh, to use the html comment syntax don't do that because it will be a syntax error uh, if you want to insert a con uh, comment, you must insert that inside only inside the, the JavaScript code. So now and then, when you are in a Java, in JSX blocks uh, block, if you want to insert a, com a comment, uh, you always must insert that uh, by enclosing that in braces. Hmm? So it's a strange thing, but uh, uh, it's also a good thing because we don't need to handle with two different comment syntaxes in the same uh, in the same uh, document. Hmm? Um, finally, uh, there are some uh, some differences in uh, in in the some attribute names mm, uh, to to the DOM node. So in general, when we are uh, passing attributes uh, to uh, com um, React com components, uh, we we are free to use what component names and values we want. They are just parameters to the function. If I am passing some properties to a DOM node, I should uh, conform to the definition of the DOM node itself. So in, in the DOM, there are some properties that whose name is not a valid identifier in JavaScript or whose value is a string with a given interpretation and then we may want to use objects for them. So there are little differences. Uh, for example, uh, all these uh, attributes like on change, on click and whatever, which uh, in HTML are just low, all lowercase, in JSX are, are written with the camel case. So in, in HTML, it doesn't care because HTML is not case sensitive. In JSX, of course, uh, it's important to have the proper case. So if, if you don't find some attribute, maybe it's a case uh, issue. And uh, uh, the style attribute, for example, is uh, it's more powerful than, than the HTML counterpart because uh, it doesn't accept a string uh, but an object uh, what it means that in in html if you write uh, if you want to customize the style of an element uh, you write style and then inside quotes uh, you have a css string huh? your string of css declarations uh, it's just a string uh, with syntaxes uh, semicolons and so on and the columns semicolon spaces to separate the elements in jsx uh, we don't want to have to build the strings uh, and so uh, the style attributes will accept an object a js object so what you see in the center is that style is uh, a javascript expression the external braces are for entering a javascript expression for representing the style 
and the second braces are for creating an object so i have a javascript expression that returns an object that's why we have two braces and this object has a property color of value white so we can write css properties as a list of object properties separated uh, compute maybe there are computed property the value is computed so it's much easier than just constructing a string by putting the pieces together at this point but uh, uh, the css properties become object properties and so they should uh, uh, be consistent with the javascript syntax for object properties for example if i have a property we call the margin top which has a dashing side is not a valid object property in js and so it should be converted to um, to uh, camel case syntax so like this margin top so it's a bit uh, of a conversion of the html name for attributes uh, and for css properties into some identifier which is more consistent with the javascript uh, word um, but it's just a, a simple syntax detail that we get we, we get used to just when we are writing jsx uh, we think we are writing html but in, in fact we are not uh, and these simple rules uh, apply and there's also a very um, handy rule that we can also use uh, in, uh, in jsx uh, especially when we want to pass several properties to a component and these properties are coming from an object so imagine you have an object mm, describing some me welcome message this object has two, pro two properties message and recipient and we want to in, uh, return a comp create a component hmm, uh, by passing the message parameter and the second the recipient parameter and so on. Uh, what we could do, uh, since the name of the property MSG is the same as the object property as MSG, and the name of the recipient property is the same name of the object property, so the two props of the component have the same name as the properties of the object we could just pass the object by spreading its properties so we can create an object with all the parameters with all the properties and uh, uh, we don't want to pass only one property of type object we can spread it and pass all the properties of the object has individual component properties so it's just it's a very handy syntax uh, coming from the spread operator and uh, <coughs> it may be used if we want to allow a component to receive uh, more parameters than it really needs hmm? uh, i mean for example i want a button i want to create a button component uh, that receives a, a property called kind because i depending on the kind i have a button of type a or a button of type b for example um, and so we create a button with a given class name uh, which is different com depending on the kind but then i need to customize also this button by giving it a value a name a type a style a class and so on mm -hmm. additional classes and so on and it would be very uh, boring to list uh, as possible properties of this button class all the properties that a real button could accept so what i could do is say okay i take all the properties i'm extracting and using the kind and all the others are put into some other object with the spread with the collect operator hmm? so it's a destructuring assignment here they will take all the properties that are not kind and put all of them to this object and this object is destructured immediately when calling the button itself so this allows us for example to call the button component you see we define the button component here with the kind which is a, a, an attribute that we need to pass because it's a property that is required but also other attributes for example the on click event or something like that that are not processed by the component but they are just passed through to the to its children so in, in this way we can we have an easy way of passing through uh, some properties through a component down to their children hmm. so it's something that we are when we are creating long nesting of components inside component inside component uh, 
it may become uh, quite useful and um, so just remember this uh, simple syntax some synt simple syntax uh, uh, details that we must remember uh, the class name uh, the HTML4 which is the same of course in JSX uh, it will have they have the same uh, constraints that we had in the create element uh, uh, call of course they are the same uh, um, cut uh, also HTML entities uh, are not directly supporting JSX so you may use the Unicode character or uh, or the escape sequence but these are just really syntax details that we can you can look up uh, uh, when you want just I'm mean, just mentioning them because if you see some some syntax error maybe you you know where they come from um, and one final point about the syntax is that uh, we saw we said we say that uh, DOM elements have a fixed set of properties which are defined by the DOM and the uh, custom components are have a free set of properties that we can define according to our needs actually there's one extra also in DOM components uh, we can add additional attributes additional properties that are not uh, um, in the DOM specification uh, for example if I have a message component uh, I can add the level uh, attribute for example but uh, in a button component I cannot have a urgency attribute for example because urgency because button is a DOM component and urgency is not a valid attribute for the DOM node uh, what we can do and this is a property of the DOM of the browser is nothing special to react but it's something that we may use is that we can prefix the name of a property with data data will create uh, data properties inside the DOM nodes and in these data properties you can store any information you want beware this information will not be stored in a react object it will be stored inside the DOM so it might be slower it may be more difficult to access but if you really need to store some information inside the DOM node and not inside a react component you can do that with a custom attribute as long as uh, this attribute name starts with data and dash okay this closes our overview of the uh, JSX language and we are now ready to go to the next step uh, particularly react components which are the real core that will use this syntax to create all the element trees that we are discussing